Hello everyone. I'm Lester. I'm from Flexport, the track trade manager of Japan and South Korea. I'm responsible for the country's、uh, development and sales and operations and customer experience. Basically, everything related to South Korea and Japan、uh, comes to me.、Uh, so, thanks for the invitation on this seminar. I'm very glad that I can share some of my experience to all of you. So, let me start with a little story. In the last two years, in Hong Kong,、uh, it's been、uh, quite a long time of lockdown. We Cannot go anywhere, basically. So we had a new habit. We go camping like every weekend, or sometimes twice a week, to try to stay outside and meet some friends in the hills, in the mountains. And、uh, we did it quite regularly. And then one of my friends, he is a cameraman. He shooting videos for for organization, for for marketing, for the government. Even for some pop star, for some MV,、uh, he is basically an artist. And after, after like two to three times, we went camping together. He had some new ideas because he he found the gears of camping looks dull, boring. So he tried to make something for his own. The first thing he made is a light. A lamp shade like this, this picture, and then、um, everyone find it so beautiful. It's very stylish, and other people camping around us found it very beautiful. And they ask, "Where did we buy buy this?" And then he start making more and more and more of them,、uh, and the words just spread around through the. Instagram, Facebook, and some forums. Ah,、uh, then ah,、uh, he start thinking to oh, why don't I make my own business of making this kind of camping thing in his spare time? So, um, and then he found there's quite a good channel called Shopify. It's a platform that make him very easy to build the whole shops. Online, there is templates that he can use. He doesn't have to build everything all over again, and and then he he started his own business. And one and a half year later, he was building the first thing, the lampshade, to this the whole series of camping gears with style. And then he start sh、uh, shipping those thing not only to Hong Kong and then to Japan, to Korea, to Thailand. To Taiwan, because we share a similar camping rush, and people love beautiful things in their campsite. So his business growing bigger and bigger. So this is how he start his startup. And then the problem comes because we all know as a startup,、um, you only have one, two, three person running that business. And all of your focuses will be definitely on your product development, finding new customers, and manage a relationship. You seldom think about shipping because at the beginning he shipped everything through DHL, FedEx, those express delivery. That is very expensive, but because he didn't want to make money, he wants to share good thing with others, so he's fine with it. But When the business grow bigger and bigger and bigger, he start facing a challenge that how do he manage all the orders? How do he organize everything? Manage logistic, dealing with the challenges of space and customs and the deliveries in the destination because、uh, relying on express is too expensive. It's not a, a sustainable business model, so that's why we are here today.、Uh, we focus very much on startup business. We hope the solution can help everyone 
startup business that is limited on resources. You don't want to hire a team of logistic team, and uh, but you want to focus on the business and with a lot of support that can be brought by the technology we have. So thanks, welcome, and let's start. Low visibility, high unpredictability, and not enough control. These are the daily challenges in supply chain and global trade. But what if there was a better way to move freight, clear customs, and make smarter decisions about your supply chain? That's where Flexport comes in. Flexport is the trusted freight forwarder and customs broker for more than 10,000 shippers and suppliers across the world. From trade advisory and customs compliance to securing cargo capacity, Flexport helps create a more efficient, cost-effective supply chain. Our digital platform provides end-to-end -end visibility on shipments from origin to destination. So you're able to manage everything from a single, personalized dashboard that delivers insights you care about and exceptions that need your attention. Need to zero in on what matters most? Customizable tags let you do just that in the language of your business. Add tags by PO, SKU, a new product launch, or something else. This lets you filter shipment data based on those tags to flag what you deem a priority. You're able to make business decisions confidently. And reliable shipment tracking helps you know when goods will arrive so you can sell in-transit SKUs. You're also able to use rich data to evaluate landed costs, container utilization, and carbon emissions per shipment. Then, build custom reports in seconds to inform business strategy and future shipments. Plus, you can keep everyone on the same page with their own personalized view of your supply chain. Your company, suppliers, partners, and your Flexport team in a single, easy-to-use interface. Now you can say goodbye to countless spreadsheets and emails and save valuable time. Flexport, connecting who and what matters to you in a single, secure, cloud-based platform. It's all part of our mission to make global trade easy for everyone. So after this session, I'll make sure you understand what's the difference of Flexport making compared to the rest of the forwarders, and then how we work. And of course, we will cover something about semiconductor industry that is so strong in here, Korea. So logistic is a very long process. It's highly regulated and very expensive. And when we export something from the origin to the destination, we have gone through so many different processes that with no visibility at all. So we give it to our freight forwarders and then they handle it for us. They arrange the trucking, the shipping, and the custom, everything behind the scene. Uh, if you want to know those information, you have to go into the, give them a call or you send them email or perhaps they have some um, track and trace system but that is all fr very fragmented so that's why we are going to fix this problem we want to improve the process and make it more efficient that's what we are doing now so when we're talking about the platform of logistics, there are actually four different parts. The first part is the origin side, for example, it's like a, the track and trace and the carrier information, the documents management, the shipping side documents. And then the other system is the vendor management, your order management, uh, warehousing. That's another system, the WMS. And the third most complicated one is the customs different custom documents system, how to manage those invoices, data, and shipping documents. And the last system is the freight payment system. Uh, and also some analysis, uh, booking data. You want to talk to the carrier, how much I load uh, during the slack season and how 
more volume I give you during the peak season, something like that, you want the data to support uh, your negotiation with the carriers. So we are trying to make everything together in a single platform to make sure uh, you don't lose your track, you don't um, you, you can confidently get everything you want immediately through the platform. So this is what we did in the past few years. In 2014, we start the market discovery. Um, Peter Ryan, uh, Brian Peterson, our CEO, uh, had this idea and then he started doing research. And then four years later, uh, we developed some uh, tools and solutions and until 2020, we connect everything together into a single cloud-based platform. And until now, we are aiming to make a operating system for global trade. So that is not limited to logistic, but also on the whole supply chain journey. That will be uh, OS. It's like uh, you have windows to do all the uh connect all the documents and calculation and program and uh so it's like an ecosystem single platform to connect everything in that one system and what is this ecosystem basically there are a few focuses the first one is the platform we want to have a full visibility real-time updates documents, put everything into a single place so you don't have to find it from the email, PDF and folders, share drive, everything will be on a single place. And we want this platform to cover the custom brokerage thing. And also uh, we will fit in more and more data that could help your business. And the second cluster is, we want to improve the operational efficiency. So we want you have hire less people in your logistic team and do more work and faster. That's the way we want to have. And then we will also provide some trade advisory and export consultation based on our experience and the data we have. We can give you some feedback if you need. So now we are sitting in between two things. We are kind of a freight forwarders, a logistic service providers. At the same time, we are also a SAAS provider, providing service platform. So just an example, um, when you use a freight forwarder, they have you ship trucking, custom, they have you everything, and, but they don't provide that visibility and the data to you. And on the other hand, in the logistic market, there is some platform provider like um, Cargo Spheres, Cargo Wise. Um, they can help the freight forwarders to provide this kind of platform, EDI connections, data to serve your business. So Flexbox is in between them. We are. A logistic provider, we have the uh, infrastructure, we have the trucking, carriers, air space, and custom team. We have the physical thing to serve you, and but everything is powered by our platform. So this is our strength, this is our vision, and we believe combining both worlds that could make the whole process easier and synergize the whole thing. So there are three main areas we focus to develop our platform. The first thing is you want everything to be automated. Of course, it's a long road, but uh, we are prioritizing the most important and the most time consuming and the most repetitive thing to make it automated. Uh, that's the first goal we have to achieve. And then with all the data, we very much encourage AI-driven efficiency. For example, uh, we use the data 
to predict the seasonalities. You can use the data to understand whether your invoice and your quotation is matching. We use the AI to support the custom curing process to match everything exactly in order not to prolong the custom curing process. So a lot of things is driven by AI behind the scene for the platform. And the last thing is because the platform is evolving every day and is giving so many new functionalities to the customers. We want our platform to be connected to your platform, um, to your order management system, if you have one. And uh, for example, we want you to place the booking directly from your system to our platform, to the carriers. That's another thing, example. So now uh, I'll explain more later what we can connect via API because everything with Flexbot is cloud-based. So um, it's like open the tab and all the data is flowing and all the information you need can fit directly to your systems. So with all these, our process can be simplified from the legacy model, the top one, to the flexport model, lower one. How we can do that? Because we have saved so many back and forth communications, email, phone calls, and we put everything, every person, every stakeholders, every documents into the platform. So whenever you need to talk to your custom broker, you talk to your truckers, you don't have to pull all the data, documents, send them email all over again. You just give the access to them and then they can look into their part and get all the information and data needed and do their work. So that's the concept, everything cloud-based, everyone can access to that platform with their own authority. So first, this is the platform that to orchestrate the trade, everything. Uh, we build this platform to let the, all the customers, their stakeholders to access all the information that is related to them. And also um, we put all the data here in the same place. After that, we provide full transparency on your shipment. What does it mean? It's like you basically can know what we are doing behind the scene. For example, when we arrange trucking, have you placed booking? Is, has the truck arrived to the warehouse? Uh, has, has the truckers pick up the cargo and going back to the terminal? Everything is updated real time in the platform. So once you log in to that, you can see where is your shipment, your container, and down to skill level in the map that can appear there and you can understand where it is going. And the last important thing is we put all the communications in the same page because we, we understand um, there are too many different ways to communicate. So we arrange the communications in this platform down to shipment level, down to PO level. So everything related to this PO, the booking, trucking, SI, etc., customs, all the communications can be done in the same place. And then because it is PO based, so um, you can be very focused on that single PO. You don't uh, confuse with the other shipments. That's very common in your email, right? You search your product and then you have like thousands of same uh, similar subjects that you have to filter. And then sometimes you confuse the last PO and, and this PO, etc. cetera. So um, they uh, prove that uh, it helps us to help our customers to a lot to save their time and make things accurate. 
So this is a little summary comparing us, the legacy forwarders and the uh, staff provider. We basically combine the best of both worlds. That's why we can save you more time communicating with different stakeholders and parties and organize things. Uh, the traditional way is perhaps you hire uh, freight forwarders and then the freight forwarders, they will have their own service provider like, uh, for example, SAP and CargoWise. Um, but uh, there is no single platform that provide uh, the traditional logistics service and all the platforms functionalities together in one place. Um, that's why uh, we are trying to make this happen. All right, so this is what customer says. So let's talk about the freight market. In the past two years, we have received quite a lot of information and data about how COVID affecting the freight markets. So basically there are three folds. The first one is on the supplier side, all the suppliers, they assume customer will not buy goods because of the economic downturn. And then the reduced PO, the cut the investment and the supply went down dramatically. And at the same time, when the customers cut on the buying on the surface, they contrarily, they increase the buying on the hard products, on the durable goods. So that makes the physical products demand boom in the market. And on the logistics side, because Logistics invest heavily on the hard assets. 90% of the utilization for a vessel or for a plane is necessary to break even. So at that time when the COVID happened, the logistic industry are being very cautious and then they cut the capacity to make sure the utilization is on the, will be on the high side. So we also see a dramatic demand uh, supply cut on the logistic segment. So let's look into it deeply. This is the first chart explaining the demand change in three different goods. The purple line is the durable goods, the red line is the non-durable goods, and the green line is surface. You can notice there is quite a stable relationship pattern uh, from the beginning of 2017 until the COVID happened. And then there is a sudden drop when the COVID happened. And um, people expect that uh, in the bad economic, the income is going down, the spending is going down. But uh, out of the price, you can see suddenly the durable goods demand is picking up high even by high even higher than before so um apparently it's driven by the durable goods and because the spending on service is less there is more money to spend and also because of the fiscal policy the government is putting a lot of money into people's pockets so the demand uh goes up uh, during the pandemic time, especially in the US. And the second part is for the space supply. We focus more on the ocean freight capacity because 95% of the freight is moved by the ocean vessels. And the green line is the demand for space. The gray line is the planned space and the red line is the actual space. You can notice that because of the two-digit two growth of durable goods, the demand of space is going higher, much higher than before. And then 
on the gray line, the plan space, indicate that the carriers is preparing ships and injecting capacity, uh, reactivating the idle, idle vessels and putting more capacity into the market, try to cater the demand. But if you look into the red line, the actual space is not increasing. There are a few reasons. The first reason is from the C Intel, uh, the port, the terminal is on their full capacity and that becomes a bottleneck of the, of the ocean transportation. And also the port truck warehouse, the local truckings also is a delay factor when moving the cargo into the country and then moving out back to the vessel. So the, the circulation has, a, has, a, has an issue uh, back in the, that time. And also because of the terminal congestion, there, are, there were 13% of capacity is holding outside of the port. And if you talk about the Trans-Pacific trade, 20% of the capacity is waiting outside the terminal. Um, that's why we see the huge gap between the demand and supply on the ocean transportation. And even if the carriers can, can add more vessels, it will only wait much longer outside the terminal. And because building ship injecting capacity is much easier than increasing the port efficiencies, uh, the only way they can do it is uh, longer working time and ask people to work harder, work faster, but uh, you cannot expand the capacity of the terminal by overnight. So that's what we had. That's the problem we had in the, in during that time. So let's take a look in the coming few years, ocean freight capacity projections. Ocean carriers has responded very quickly. There is about new capacity of 2.8 million TUs ordered. It's talking about like 11 to 12% of total capacity. But building a vessel is quite slow. We can see in the chart, the peak of new capacity coming will be on 2023. And if you look at the air freight market, we have similar issues because during the COVID time, there is less passenger flight. That's why uh, the supply for the cargoes, air cargoes is very restricted. And uh, we believe until the passenger flight fully back to normal, otherwise the supply will be under a very constrained situation until then. And besides the capacity issues, there are also some uncertainties coming. The first one is the US terminal ILW uh, contract negotiations. Um, it will be finished very soon. I believe by end of May, the negotiation will be done and everybody is expecting a smooth negotiation this year, but uh, this will be a uncertainties. And then there will be IMO 2023. In 2020s, um, the IMO reduced the industry's sulfur ratio to 0.5%. And in 2023, they are going one step further. All the vessels, which is bigger than 5,000 gross tonnage or above, they have to install a uh, fuel oil consumption data collection system. That will provide digital data to IMO to monitor the consumption on each particular vessels. And from 1st of January 2023, every ship will be subject to a rating from A to E on the uh, fuel consumption. This will determine the annual reduction factor needed to ensure a continuous improvement of the ship's operation 
operational carbon intensity within a specific rating level. We expect they 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 want the the purpose is to reduce twelve percent further on the greenhouse greenhouse gas. But we already know that the carriers has been changed the field to zero point five low sulfur field uh, back in twenty twenty. So what can they do? We expect uh, the vessel will reduce their speed by around six percent to reduce co to the consumption of fuel. That will also lead to a result of reducing capacity overall. So let's see what will the IMO 2023 bring to the industry. All right. So let's talk about a case study about the semiconductors. Low visibility, high unpredictability, and not enough control. These are the daily challenges in supply chain and global trade. But what if there was a better way to move freight, clear customs, and make smarter decisions about your supply chain? That's where Flexport comes in. Flexport is the trusted freight forwarder and customs broker for more than 10,000 shippers and suppliers across the world. From trade advisory and customs compliance to securing cargo capacity, Flexport helps create a more efficient, cost-effective supply chain. Our digital platform provides end-to-end -end visibility on shipments from origin to destination, so you're able to manage everything from a single, personalized dashboard that delivers insights you care about and exceptions that need your attention. Need to zero in on what matters most? Customizable tags let you do just that in the language of your business. Add tags by PO, SKU, a new product launch, or something else. This lets you filter shipment data based on those tags to flag what you deem a priority. You're able to make business decisions confidently. And reliable shipment tracking helps you know when goods will arrive so you can sell in-transit SKUs. You're also able to use rich data to evaluate landed costs, container utilization, and carbon emissions per shipment. Then, build custom reports in seconds to inform business strategy and future shipments. Plus, you can keep everyone on the same page with their own personalized view of your supply chain. Your company, suppliers, partners, and your Flexport team in a single, easy-to-use interface. Now you can say goodbye to countless spreadsheets and emails and save valuable time. Flexport. Connecting who and what matters to you in a single, secure, cloud-based platform. It's all part of our mission to make global trade easy for everyone. So, Asia Pacific represents like one third of the uh, economic profit of the semiconductor industry, and it is in increasing very fast. So, Recently, um, the challenges here in the semiconductor industry is we have some customers, they are doing some uh, car semiconductors, uh, the chips of the cars, basically. And during the COVID, the car demand dropped significantly, and then certainly they have received less orders. But um, that's why they they need to keep the plant running. They shift the focus on the car chips to the other chips. And suddenly when the lockdown is lifted, the demand comes up again. And then they immediately have to shift their focus again back to the car chips. It takes time and it creates a lot of volatility on, on the raw material, uh supplies and uh, shipments and um basically it just create a chaos to them why because if you look into the development and production timelines of uh of the uh, semiconductors it takes basically four and more months to start the productions for a product but if you change plan or you if you change product it takes more than one year to shift from one product to another because uh, everything is different. So uh, 
basically it creates a lot of volatility on how they do the logistics for the incoming materials and export tank to their customers. Uh, so it, it's very challenging for them. So what we hear from them is they need a much better visibility. They need a much more responsive feedback from the logistic provider. And we have to be ready whenever they need something, even sometimes before they ask for us. So what we did with this kind of semiconductor customers, the first thing, uh, after we understand the problem, we connect our system with the infantry. So when we see uh, the infantry is going up, we think uh, maybe it's time to, uh, to ship for them. So uh, we can give them some report and data and let them know uh, and consider what's the next step to do. And to facilitate the whole process, we have connected our booking system to their system so they can place booking directly through their system instead of going to our platform and place a new booking. They can do it on their own system via the API. And um, after the booking, um, all the shipments will have the route details before the shipment move. So they can have a uh, advanced schedule to share with their customers and the internal management team to make sure uh, everything is in place and ready and within the ship window. Last thing is um, over time, we can share with them the shipment health dashboard and then uh, the data analysis for them to reveal whether uh, this process is efficiency enough and also reveal uh, on their business model, whether it is efficient enough or they can do some advanced planning for the next project. So that's what we do with them. And uh, we, we also see there is more and more uh, semiconductors manufacturers in South Korea. Uh, it's increasing the volume recently and um, the business is growing very, very quickly. So I hope we can see more and more coming and that's it for today. And I thank you for your participation and uh, I'm very glad to be part of this seminar. Thanks a lot. Thank you.